All right, so schooling. Uh, my apologies for those of you who have already watched the videos or played around Schoology or whatever. Well, I'm going to kind of crash course everything today. Uh, but before we get to diving into Schoology, we want to talk about we want to talk about why you're here. So actually, um, I'm probably going to pause the video for this, but for those of you playing at home, what we're going to do is go around the room uh, to help me get to know you guys also. And I want to know <laughs> your motivation for being here. Because actually, in conversation with a student yesterday, we realized that he didn't have the right motivation for the class. He really didn't need to be in the class. There was really no reason for him to spend $400 and take this class and he needed to drop the class. It really was not a good idea. We talked with the math teacher, everything else. So, that's what I want to know for you because the drop deadline was technically yesterday, but if you decide that you want to drop, I'll make it happen. Um, I'm not trying to chase anybody out of the class, but we need to be realistic. This is a lot to bite off, right? We're going to take an entire high school math course in approximately six weeks of working time. I don't really figure you guys are going to do much work Fourth of July week because we're off, but if you do, good for you. So, I'm going to pause the video. Those of you at home, this will jump right to when we dive into lesson stuff. But, aside from that, back into the recording. So, I obviously do not expect you to be, like, jumping for joy excited that we're doing math over the summer. I mean, I get excited about the Pythagorean theorem, but I doubt that when you go to the beach, that's what you're carving into the sand. <laughs> However, as a lot of you said in your motivation... You don't want to slide backwards. You don't want to lose that knowledge that you've already got. And on top of that, if what you've done this previous year was easy, then you're probably ready for a bigger challenge. So in comes Math 1, and um, some of what you guys have already said, like there is overlap. These first four chapters should be overlap material. So solving equations and inequalities. Now, when I say should be overlap, I don't mean you should know all of it. I mean you should be familiar with it. It should not be like brand new to you. There are going to be parts that you don't totally understand, and we're coming from five different places. When you look at middle schools, high schools, and like alternative options, we're coming from five different places here. So you all have probably more than five different places of where you're starting at. We will fill the gaps and fill the holes as we find them and as we need to. Um, chapter two, intro to functions. Chapter three, linear functions. Hopefully you guys recognize what a linear function is compared to nonlinear and systems of equations and inequalities. So before we dive into like the, well, I'll do a Schoology crash course here in a second. If you have yet to get the first four chapter assessments, those are either stapled together right here or not stapled together right back here. We'll cover digital classroom in a second. Physical classroom space. All of your everything is back here. From this point forward, sorry, I love you guys. I'm not touching this filing cabinet again unless it's empty or unless like it's hitting low because I have for a few people and this was fine before we started like gotten packets set up for you like when you were coming in to grab stuff or whatever. From here on out, you're on your own. So chapters one through four, the assessments are back here. If you so choose to just dive into those, I don't know who decided they didn't want some basic construction notes. Um, somebody bailed on those. I'll figure out where those go later. So then in the folder, yeah. So like in the folder you'll see it's notated with what the section is. The front of the folder will have your notes. The back of the folder will have your practice. I did not want to waste a bunch of folders making one for notes and one for practice. So as you're going through here, just open it up, grab from the front, flip the pages, grab from the back, and you've got everything for that little section. Um, it doesn't take very long, but I would grab like a folder or a binder or something to put these into as you go. You'll notice the notes have their numberings, like 5.2, 5.3, whatever. The practices don't. So either keep your practices in order or I would just throw a numbering down on your practices as you get them. So chapters up through 8 are in the top drawer, chapters 9 through 14 are in the bottom drawer. So all that stuff, now you notice assessments are not in here. Assessments have to be taken face to face. And once you're ready, and when you turn in um, your homework and your practice work. So chapters one through four, those assessments can be taken outside of class or like here, just sitting in front of me, whatever. You can take it home. You can use notes from last year, whatever else. I just ask that you're not like Googling the problems because that will not help you because eventually that will bite you in the butt that you did not know how to do that work because it is foundational skills 
for the rest of the class. So please, on those first four chapters, use that as like an identifier for what do I need to ask questions on and what am I okay on. It's okay that you need to ask questions. I do revisions, we'll get to all that stuff. Like grades are kind of flexible. Ava? <clears throat> um, what if you're, you're, can you start another chapter? Yeah. Like, you could be working on every chapter at the same time. But like, yeah, so if you finish the chapter, but you haven't taken the assessment. Yeah. Like, yep. So you can start the chapter six stuff before you take the five assessment. You can start the chapter nine stuff before you take the chapter five assessment. I, it's, you can work on whatever you want, whenever you want, except assessments need to be face to face. Now that doesn't mean you have to wait till Tuesday. I have office hours. So as what went home to all your parents multiple times and what was available on the Worthington website, the rundown, I could find it in my docs, but it's just as quick to do this. If you go to Worthington, Academics, Summer School, Enrichment Get Ahead, and Math One, here you will see my additional information this has everything, and you should have already looked at this. If not, that's slightly concerning. But face-to-face -face classes, and we'll discuss here in a minute whether we want it to do, uh, whether we want our face-to-face -face classes to be 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. Um, I'll be here by 8 a.m., but whether we want the official start to be 8 or 9 is up to you guys. I think starting earlier is better because then you're up, you're going, and then you have more time on the back side of things as opposed to if you start later, then all you're going to do is sleep. I mean, let's be honest. Um, yeah, this is worth talking over. So students are going to be successful if you're organized, self-motivated, and passionate about learning math. So most of you sound like you made the decision yourself. Even uh, mom and dad made me. You're already in chapter six, so obviously you're motivated. Um, students are strongly encouraged to gain access to the material prior to today. So if you're just getting into Schoology, don't want to stress you out, but you're slightly behind compared to your peers. Um, July 28th is the absolute last day that I can accept work. So if you are like trying to notate important things, July 28th is the absolute last day. I gotta submit grades. Uh, what else should we cover? <clears throat> so in Schoology, you will notice a few things. So when you log into Schoology, you're gonna be dropped on your homepage. So everybody go, you should be on phoenixms.org if you have not gotten into Schoology yet. So if you're on phoenixms.org, or you can get to Schoology from the Worthington portal, it's just a little bit easier with that. Let's teach you how to get to it from the portal. So if you just wanted to go straight to Schoology, you just click on Schoology up here. Phoenix has a link set up that it will know that you're a Worthington student. But if you're going the portal route, everyone click on W Cloud to go to your portal. Then log into your portal. Anybody having issues getting logged into your portal? I don't know if people are just already there or if you're ignoring me. Or if my computer is just um, going to take ages. Are you still there? I will try this again. All right. From here, you'll land on your homepage, which I don't know how much stuff your homepage or your portal has. Go over to My Account, and you'll find Schoology. I would right-click on Schoology and add it to your favorites. Notice that mine says Remove because it's already in my favorites. I would add it. From there, you can just click on it, and it will log you in automatically. That's one of the easiest ways to get into Schoology because it logs you in automatically. The other way, if you don't take that route, just so we're comfortable with Schoology, is if I went just to Schoology.com, and it actually is probably going to... Um, if you first learned in Schoology, you have to Okay. So if you search Worthington Schoology, that'll take you to the link like what Phoenix has on their website. But if not, when you go here and you start typing your login and everything, it will ask you what school or postal code so that would be like your 43081 or 43085 or whatever, whatever your zip code of your school was. Or you can just go to the Worthington Schoology page. Um, or you can just go through the portal. So either way, many ways to get there. Once here, you lay it on your homepage. So is everyone on their Schoology homepage? Mm hmm? You good, Ava? Yeah. Okay. You probably won't have much going on. I'm in lots of groups and lots of classes and things. You can join whatever groups you want. 
Um, I have a few. But right now, what you care about is courses. You should have Hudson Summer Math 1 Blended Section 1. Click on that, go there. Now, right when you immediately logged into Schoology, you would have had what we kind of call your Sports Center feed on the right hand side. But now, you will only have the Math 1 Sports Center feed, which for you guys should not really change anything. You have your feed over here of what's upcoming and when it's due. If you want to see a calendar view, click on the calendar over here. So, everybody click on the little calendar that actually they've coded to have today's date. Who coded? You can see we have face-to-face -face scheduled today. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, 3, and 4 assessments are all due today. Next week, Chapter 5, Lesson Notes and Practice are due, as well as the assessment to be taken here. 6, Notes and Practice, as well as the assessment. You can work ahead of this. I encourage you to work ahead of this. You do not need to wait for the calendar to do your work. This is the absolute latest that you should be doing things. Starting next week, if people are falling behind, I'm going to be contacting parents to say, like, okay, what's going on? Are we really, like, are we able to do this? Because you are able to get half, well, at least last year, you were able to get half of your payment back by dropping during the first semester. So if you decide this is not for me, I'm a little overwhelmed, this is too much, um, you are able to drop today. Contact me, I'll, I'll get with um, the, the WEC and take care of it. But you are able to drop today and get a full refund. If you drop any point after today, you'll get a half refund. If you drop any point after the 4th of July, like after that break, there's no refund. So, you got to decide, am I going to be able to you know, deal with this, this big of a course in this summer? If you go to the next month, you can see the dates for July are set up that you would take your final by the 25th. Nobody needs to come here on the 25th. Notice that I didn't put the other face-to-face -face sessions in here, but I did specifically put that there's no face-to-face -face this week. I will be gone this entire week. I'll be out of town. So notice that it says no office hours. Please do not email me or text me and ask me for office hours. You can, however, email and text me and ask me for help. I have, and you'll notice in a couple of the videos, I'm in a really nice office, like a home office. That's my brother-in-law's. That's not mine. I don't have that nice of a house. Um, even though I'm on vacation, I'm not not working. So if you guys need help, even though I'm on vacation, you can text or call me for help. You will not be able to come in here. The building will not be unlocked. So like you will not be able to come to Phoenix. Um, you would ideally be taking the 13 and 14 assessments by the 18th, if not sooner, and then the final anytime after that. So there's no formal midterm, but there is a formal final. Um, look over on your left-hand column here, and notice that where we are is on the updates page. I will be posting updates probably every couple days or so. Um, I'll at least post one every week. They are important. I would read through all of them. So probably not right now. There's not a ton. But this kind of is a crash course of Schoology of kind of what we're going over right now. Uh, this is important. The Pearson modules, when I talk about that in the video, don't exist. We used to use them. We realized that they were not that beneficial. So uh, this is worth talking about, How to Survive Summer School. So, if you've ever seen like the Eat This, Not That books or whatever, a lot of people like lists of do these behaviors and don't do these behaviors and you'll be set up for success. So, attend class. It's really important that you come and check in at least once a week because even though, how do I phrase this? You are a lot more likely to admit that you need some help when the help is super easy to get. It is more difficult for you to make the text or call or email when there's that huge distance between us. When there's this distance between us and this availability, you're a lot more likely to be like, hey, Mr. Hudson, what, uh, remind me how to do this, as opposed to like, oh, I gotta text him, and I gotta hope he's available. And like, so come to class. Come to office hours. If you're struggling with things, come to face to face time. Don't skip. If you're not here for vacation or whatever, I get that, but don't just skip class just because you don't wanna come. Schedule yourself. Hold yourself accountable. Do not say, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, I'll do it tomorrow. Don't do that. Hold yourself accountable to a schedule. Wing it. Not the right thing to do. Uh, maybe I'll do a section today, and I'll plan on three tomorrow, and I'll do a whole chapter the next day. No, plan it out. Engage with your peers. This is a blended course, and it's very easy to feel like you're on your own. You are not. You've got a class full of peers. We've got 23 people taking this class. Engage with each other. 
There are message boards on Schoology. Those are for you guys to communicate back and forth as well as like, I'll be part of those message boards also. But engage with each other. Don't space out and just do your own thing. Uh, balance your work though. I had a student from a previous year who ended up getting themselves in a really bad like mental state because they were so stressed out about getting their math work done. They really should have just dropped the class. Like they should have admitted that to themselves. And I tried to have that conversation with them. Um, but they got themselves so stressed out. It was like seriously an unhealthy situation. So balance what you do. Don't just do math all day. Go out and ride your bike. Go play basketball. Go for a hike. Go do whatever you enjoy. Play with your dog. Go to the pool. Don't just do math because then you wind up hating math. So balance what you do. Bring water, no joke, even though we're inside, we're in air conditioning, being dehydrated kills your brain power. It literally like is harder to concentrate and harder to think when you are dehydrated. By the time you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. You need to be uh, proactive about making sure that you're like overly hydrated. Uh, drinking pop is the enemy. I know it's like, oh, I'll get some sugar, I'll get some caffeine. Yeah, that's the enemy. Takes eight eight ounce glasses of water, approximately 64 ounces or half a gallon, to replace one 12 ounce can of soda. The sugar and everything else that it does to your body, the amount of like hydration it robs you of, takes 64 ounces of water to come back from that. Don't do that to yourself. Um, and yeah, you can be a good student and still have an awesome summer. So there's that there. This is the Pearson modules. I'm gonna click on materials. Actually, if you want, notice that there's grade book over here. If you turn stuff in, you might have grades in the gradebook already. Uh, if you click on attendance, you'll see that you were here today. If you click on members, you'll see that you have other people in the class and you can like message them or do things like that. Um, before we go to materials, I want to play with this. Go to big blue button. Do you guys have this on the left hand column here, big blue button? Yes, no, maybe. Um, I'm going to test this out because I've never used it. Does this now show up for you guys? No. Well, refresh your page. Oh. It, my computer here at school is weird. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do this on my laptop. Is it there now? Yeah, it's there. I, my Adobe is not working. So that's one option. Yeah, so I, I'll have to use my laptop at, um, at home to do this. But when you guys need help, just like FaceTime, we can video conference that easily. So all we have to do is log into Schoology, go to Big Blue Button, I create a conference. So if people are all struggling on the same same sort of thing, multiple people can join in the same video conference. I'm pretty sure you guys might have to test this. I think you can make your own conferences too. Are you able to create conference on your end? Uh, maybe they didn't open up that availability. You could, it is a potential option, but Worthington apparently thought that was a bad idea, which I can understand why. Um, so, big blue button, that's what that is, is video conferencing that we, as many people as we want. Um, so you could even, like say you're not going to be able to be in class, but you're going to be close to a computer. If you want, you could big blue button and I could like video, or I could uh, screen share for class and then you would like be able to be part of it, even though you aren't there. So if you go to materials, um, chapter five is our first new materials. So that is where everything is really like full. Before that, you may see there's some random things. Um, I've beefed these up as we've gone, but like here's a discussion board. So chapter four, if you're perplexed, um, as people ask for help, this is that whole like you have to be a self advocate, you have to help yourself. If you ask for specific help, so today we'll go over the first four chapters, we'll answer questions for that. But as you ask for specific help, those videos will go right here in the help me folder. So from chapter four. There's only been one specific question, and it was solving systems of equations and a chemical solution. So we go through that process. I made a little five-minute video. So if you've watched any of my videos already, you will have seen. You just get a shot of me. I've occasionally been moving my camera around. And then you see what's on my screen. Uh, you can full screen it. You can change the speed. You can do whatever. Uh, you can follow YouTube and go there if you want. Um, but that help me folder should be in each of the chapters. Then inside of here, 
look at this material. Don't just click through it or past it, like getting where you're trying to go. If you're trying to go into 401, check this out first and be like, okay, wait, so do I remember what we're doing? When I'm solving my graph and what I'm looking for is a point where the two graphs meet each other, and that point then becomes my solution. Like, that's a really brief, really quick, uh, pretty powerful solving with substitution. Uh, I'm going to plug one into the other equation, watch it through. So I put a lot of work into building this stuff. Check these things out before you just dive right into those folders. Uh, but when you click Summer Math 1, it drops you back out to the updates page. So FYI, some people get frustrated with that. I will not change it because those updates are really important. So if everyone goes into chapter five, and you click on the video, it'll play the video, so you have to click somewhere not on the video. Textbook excerpts are totally up to you if you want to check them out. Um, there's a check, uh, textbook called CK12, and I had that unpublished, but now it's published. This goes a little bit beyond what we're doing. But if you're one of those really passionate people, like you really love math, and if you refresh your page, that'll show up now, now that I published it. But this will look like a textbook to you probably, but just digital format. So it, and this talks about limits. We don't really get into limits this year, but if you're curious about things, in those folders that are labeled textbook, it kind of goes through um, what the textbook would lay out for you. Um, sometimes they have to write in, oh, there we go, changed it to code. Sometimes they have to write in latex, so if you ever see things written weird, uh, your code may not be like changing right. It may not be reading it correctly. So you might try to load it in a different browser or something. But if I go back to the Chapter 5 folder, notice that in every section folder, like 5.1 is a section, if I click in here, there's Notes, Video, Homework. Uh, the homework form here does not always line up with the homework form from the filing cabinet. That's okay. Just make sure you're aware of which homework you have. Video lessons I've tried to keep around 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I listen to a lot of music on YouTube, so all my YouTube stuff that pops up is either math or music. Um, you can adjust the speed on these. I forget if you can do it from, yeah, you can do it from this page. I would, my advice is don't go to YouTube because YouTube's like crack cocaine. As soon as I go to YouTube, mm. I have a whole list of things over here that it wants me to, to go to. Oh, I want to go watch a Tiny Desk concert. I love NPR at Tiny Desk. Oh, I could go watch some about zero negative exponents because I'm such a nerd. I don't go to YouTube. It's like crack, people. You can't resist it. And before you know it, it's an hour later, and all you've done is watch cats playing piano. So try to stay on this page if possible. They've written the code very well that you can full screen it right from here. You do not need to go to YouTube. Stay in Schoology if you can. If I go back into the Chapter 5 folder and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see something that might be a little surprising. Answers to everything. Quite legitimately, everything. Once you do your Chapter 5 homework, so go ahead and click on Chapter 5 Answers to Practice, you are going to want to check your answers. Now notice this is an 88-page document. I want to help you guys learn how to work this. So, let's say your for first homework, anyone have 5-1 homework? Just yeah, like, yeah. which one is it? Is it a G form or a K form? G form. G form. So, I'm going to scroll down through here, and I'm going to look on the right-hand side. I'm looking for that form G. Boom. My first homework is zero negative exponents. I now know my homeworks are approximately on the six pages. So, if I want to go to the next homework, these are spaced approximately 10 pages apart. So if I want to go to homework 5.2, if I go to page 16 and jump there, hey, look, I'm on homework 5.2. If I go to page 26, I'm probably somewhere close to homework 5.3. If I need a G form, I can scroll up and find my G form. If I needed that K form, I can scroll down and find that K form. There are also other activities in here. So if you're still a little iffy on Chapter 5 and you want some more practice, look at the other stuff they have here. So especially, um, let me download this really quick so I can full screen it. So notice they give you like these performance tasks and then the answers to them. Like if you are at all struggling, there's all kinds of help tools here that you can look at solved work that can help you make sense of what we're doing. So 
excuse me, on top of using this document to check your practices, this is also here to help fill in any gaps if you need. Vocabulary support is in here. What are all these different things? You can print as much of this as you want. Uh, you can print from here. Uh, you can't print from the Chromebook, so you can set it up in the computer lab in the library. So use these answer documents. They, they're really good information. What's up, Matt? How's it going, guys? First day in summer school. I mean, first day in summer school? <laughs> no, better so place, no better place to be. And learning math on top of it. They're all that excited. They're jumping for joy based <laughs> on the Pythagorean theorem. Sorry. Good time awesome. sheet for me. Thank you much. Does this need to start this week, or should I start with paper and free math? So I had a lineup of that for the first two weeks. So wait, I should be starting. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna have a bunch um, on my first one from the previous work. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that's fine. Just make sure it doesn't go before the work. Yeah. Uh, six six. I know what I'm saying. So I'm going to do my job. Yeah. <laughs> Take it up with the board. All right. Thank you. All right. Anyway, guys, this is our summer school principal, Mr. Anderson. If you need anything, go to him. Don't go to me. Especially if you have math questions. I yeah. used to teach math, and I miss teaching it. So if you're out there working on something, please come ask me. I'll He's for real. Happy to say yes. He's one of those nerds that likes math, but for some reason got out of it. That's right. That, those administrators got to be in charge of things. Well, but most of my conversations in my office start with discipline, but then go, how's that class going? Let's get out some math stuff. Let's work on something. So, yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. All right. Any questions about anything I've covered on school with you so far? How the section folders are laid out, answer keys, uh, lesson videos. As you guys get into this and do more with it, um, You'll probably have questions, so feel free to text me, call me, email me. Um, feel free to adjust the timing on the video, speed me up if you want. But please, when I say pause this and try it on your own, please actually pause it and try it on your own. You will get no benefit from just letting the video play and just seeing the answer happen. You need to engage your brain and you need to try it on your own. Back out on the materials page, Let's see what didn't I cut? Um, these videos out on the front page are all really good videos from Khan Academy. Some are not as necessary, like Euclid as the father of geometry. That's more like a math history video. Uh, but these are math concepts. So average or central tendencies, so like mean, mean, mode, those sort of things. Um, you don't have to work in order. So sorry that we're kind of like bouncing around this morning, but I'm trying to get a lot of information in. Notice that I, we kind of toggle back and forth between algebra and geometry. We start the year with a decent amount of algebra. So functions, I mean, yeah, this is somewhat geometry with linear functions, but solving systems and exponential and radical functions, a lot of this is algebra. Then we get into geometry. Tools of geometry, transformations, connecting algebra and geometry. Seven, eight, nine really go together. I'd probably advise that you do those in order. But chapter 10 is totally kind of on its own. Reasoning and proof is its own skill set. Proving theorems about lines, I would do 10 before I would do 11. Chapter 12, kind of on its own. Congruent triangles, how do we prove that triangles are congruent? Chapter 13, I would do chapter 10 before you do 13 since it's proving you're going to be writing proofs. And proving, again, you're going to be writing proofs about quadrilaterals. So chapter 10 is a good foundation for 13, 14. But like I said, you could do 12 whenever you feel like it. So if you get frustrated or you get tired of something that you're working on, you can bounce to something else, which is why you need to make the choice, do I take chapters five and six today, or do I take all the materials today? Like, what are you going to take with you to have that availability to do as you want? Uh, I think that's pretty much everything with school. Pay attention to the feed on the right. Don't let yourself fall behind. Um, oh, up top here. Everyone find your little envelope up top. If you click on it, you will probably have nothing there. Notice where it says new message, click on new message. Start typing in Hudson. And I bet the awesome picture of Timber in a hat 
I have four dogs, by the way, three Siberian Huskies and a German Shepherd. They are my life. I love them to death. I have no children, just dogs. So click on me, send a message to me, and then you would tell me what your message is about, and you would, you know, all kinds of wonderful details so that I know how to help you, and you would send that off away from me. Stop, don't do it though, I'm joking. But what I want to show you is how sweet this can be. So let's say I want to send a message, but man, I don't really know how to describe what I'm saying. So actually, um, well, this is difficult because I'm not on my laptop, but a lot of you guys at home have laptops, whatever else. Notice that down here, there's a microphone, there's all these little buttons. So if I want to insert a file, you could like take a screenshot. By the way, who knows how to take a screenshot? Take a picture of what's on your screen. What is it? I don't know, but I've done it. It's Ellie, right? Yeah. Ellie, you've, you've taken a screenshot before on a Mac or a PC? On Chromebook. Chromebook? So, okay, so Chromebooks are slightly different. On any general Windows computer, if you look on the keyboard, there's a button that says print screen, PRT, SCRN, or just sometimes SCN. If you hit Alt, print screen. So you hold down the Alt and then you hit print screen, or you can just hit print screen. But I've now taken a picture of my screen. So say you want to send me a question, but you need to like ask about what's on the screen. You don't want to type it. Take a picture of your screen and paste it somewhere. Paste it in a Word doc or a Paint doc or whatever. You can take a picture of your screen and then send that with your question to save you some of your typing or whatever else. I can send a link. Say I'm working on something on Khan Academy. I'm working on something on YouTube or whatever. Just insert the link. And if I insert like a YouTube link, it can automatically fetch the title. So this button will auto grab the title. So all I got to do is paste the link and it will grab it for me. I can insert a separate resource. So you guys won't do that as much. I might do this if I'm sending you something. This is the biggest piece here. I, and this might get really confused because I'm currently using my webcam, but if I want to send a message and I don't want to type anything, I could send a video message. And if I was on my laptop, not on my um, desktop here, this would pop up with whatever my internal webcam or internal microphone or anything built in. And then I could just take a video. Be like, hey, Mr. Hudson, I totally don't know how to do question seven. Here it is. Or I could even like show it to the camera or whatever. You can use whatever resources at your availability to make your life easier. I always tell my students in math seven and really any of my math classes, I'm here to make your life easier. You just don't realize it yet. So you look at teachers as like, oh, they're assigning us work, they're this, that, the other. We are here to make your lives easier, but it's like long run, big picture kind of thing. Momentarily, it's probably going to be worse. So I would cancel this, please, so that I don't get a bunch of messages that are unnecessary. But that is how you would send me a message. Um, <clears throat> you probably won't have any requests. This is where your notifications live. So my most recent notification was on May 31st. Ava replied to questions, comments, and concerns, and this was my bad because I was not on Schoology as much. She posted this and I was tree trimming and doing all kinds of things that day. She then called me. Well, this was funny. I was sitting on the roof of my garage because I was pruning. I have a giant weeping willow over my house. I live over on Salbury. If you live in that neighborhood, you've probably seen it. A uh, brick house weeping willow. So I'm sitting on the roof, pruning this tree, get a phone call, talking to her, talking to Ava, discussing the math. And my wife from the ground is like, what are you? Who are you talking to? I'm like, I'm doing math. She's like, what? And then she realizes I'm on my phone and she's like, oh, whatever. But yeah, I was literally just talking math with Ava on my roof. So my bad that I didn't see this very quickly. But then Ava just took it into her own hands and called me and we got it taken care of. So I wanted to explain that. Never mind. was not she like just got mad. She called me and got yeah. it taken care of. Um, so yeah, I and so this used to be like a grade. I could give Ava a grade. So let's give Ava 10 points for her question. Grades. I don't know. This, this doesn't matter. These grades don't matter. So, not going to do that. Um, those discussion boards are useful, though. So please pay attention to those. Um, and when, if you post on our discussion board and then somebody replies to you, that will pop up in your notifications that somebody has replied to you or that something is going on or whatever. Um, any other parts of Schoology that I need to tell you about? I think that's it. 
Is there anything else on your screen that you have questions on? Anything else on your Schoology that's like, mm, what is this? So let's talk about face-to-face -face class. Face-to-face <clears throat> -face class is not class like what you're used to. Face-to-face -face class is I'm here available to help you with whatever you need. The calendar that we have on Schoology is the calendar that we're going to take to pace our face-to-face -face classes. So our, our priority today is chapters one through four, questions from the assessment. So you can do any work from those, any of the practice assignments, I can pull up notes, I can pull up whatever, but we're gonna start with chapter one, take any questions from chapter one, and just move on up forward. So if you've already done chapters one through four, and you're done with them, this is your time to work and do whatever. You are able to go home whenever you feel like it. You are able to show up or not show up whatever you feel like. My requirement is that I get a check-in with you once a week. So if you're not going to be able to be at class, check in with me somehow. Call me, text me, message me, whatever. Um, we need some kind of interaction so I know where you're at, what you're doing, what you're working on, how you're doing with it, um, and that you're on pace. Like, if we're three weeks from now and you're texting me about chapter four, like, that's no bueno. So we want to take care of chapters one through four right now, but... We're all in different places, and that's where blended gets really weird and interesting because we're all in different places. So like I said, I record everything I do. You're not really gonna miss anything once we're done with class, um, and I'll probably actually stop this and start a new recording when we go over chapters one through four assessments. Um, but if you want to stay here and work on stuff, you can. If you want to leave, you're able to do that. But if you have questions on chapter three, I'd wait till we get to that because you know you could just wait while we do chapters one and two. Um, that classroom across the way there, I believe, is completely empty. I don't know that it's being used for summer school, or at least I don't think it's being used today. If you need to print, you can go to the computer lab in the library and you're able to print from there. There's two printers in the lab, color and black and white there. Um, but when we meet face to face, when would you guys like our start time to be? Because we we do need to like powwow and talk as a group and like, okay, what's going on? What issues are we having? So do we want our start time to be eight or nine? And my first question for that, is there anybody that has to be delivered here at eight o'clock? Like your transportation can only bring you here at eight o'clock, nine o'clock will not work for you. Okay. Is there anybody who cannot be here at eight? Like today was special, you made it happen, but it doesn't work normally. Yeah, I know we've had people like high diving before and different things. So, all right. So, opinions, Ava. Um, I think that it it seems like the essential part when we start going over things should be nine, but um, like so we have time to just like get stuff. Just meander in and work on things yeah. on your own. So the other point of face to face is like one on one intervention. Okay. So once we get through chapters one, two, three, and four, that's like the end of probably group work for today. Um, and you don't have to be part of group work, but like I will do it in front of everybody. So then if people have individual questions, we do that. So if we waited and made the official start 9 a.m. for our face-to-face -face times, 8 to 9 would still be just intervention time. So I'll be here whenever you show up, you show up, and then I can help you if you need, or you can just get work done. A big thing, and I just heard Mr. Hopkins talking about this over there, last year and every year that I've done this, this is my third year, fourth year, something. Um, I've done this previously. That's all I can remember. I've had students that come in almost every day just to get work done. They're like, I can't stand my little brother. He's so annoying. He always wants to play World of Warcraft and I need the computer. We've got like unlimited computers here. We've got really fast Wi-Fi. We've got printers. We've got private spaces that we can put you. You can come here and plug in headphones and just roll. You, We've got an outdoor classroom around back. I'll bring my hammock you want. You can grab a Chromebook and go out there. The Wi-Fi works out there. Do something so that you enjoy your work. Do not lock yourself in your bedroom all summer and just try to do this there. Worthington has amazing libraries. Go to the library and do work there. It's a wonderful place to learn because it's kind of like got that atmosphere going on. Go to Starbucks. Go to the coffee. Or actually, don't go to Starbucks. Go to a local <laughs> coffee shop. Go to like La Chata Lane. Go, like, don't lock yourself away and just do math in a dark room all summer. Figure out how to enjoy it. So, I was hoping to do that in under an hour, and I'm just there at an hour. So at this point, we're going to dive into chapters one through four. 
I'm going to pull up those assessments, take any questions you guys have. I've got some papers to pass back, so I'm going to pause the video, pass back papers, and then dive into that stuff. Whatever you need to do, this is on you. Please don't fight over the filing cabinet. There's only one, and there's a lot of you, so like be in an ordered fashion. But if you have yet to work on chapters one through four assessment, I would grab one of these and start working on these and see where do I have questions, where am I iffy, and where am I good, and actually, we're probably going to immediately have questions from other people, so you may just want to engage with us on like what are those questions from, from those other people. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to pause this video, and then we'll be back with a...